Hi everyone, Eric Reynolds with your Fox 10 News Now update. A gas station clerk is in the hospital after witnesses say that a woman drove her car right into a gas station. It happened at this Shell station on Airport Boulevard. Witnesses say that the woman hit the clerk and then tried to drive away. And that's when a good Samaritan yanked her door open. Police were seen talking to the woman before leading her away in handcuffs. We was getting ready to walk off and the lady came from back over here and zoomed like she was going to hit us and ran to the store and hit the clerk lady. And she did try to drive off and somebody snatched her door open and said, no, you ain't leaving. They got her tag number and all this. And then that's when she parked right there. There's no word yet on the clerk's condition or what charges the driver may face. New details in a deadly highway collapse in George County, Mississippi. The Mississippi Highway Patrol releasing the names of the 12 victims, including two who died. Officials say 49-year-old Jerry Lee of Loosedale and 49-year-old Kent Brown of Leakesville were both killed in the crash. Now, according to authorities, Hurricane Ida dumped more than 14 inches of rain on George County, causing Highway 26 to collapse late Monday night. More than a dozen Baldwin County families are finally able to leave their neighborhood after being cut off by a washed out road. River Road at Flat Creek caved in on Monday afternoon, cutting off both access and the water supply to several homes. County crews were finally able to repair it yesterday afternoon. The water level did drop several feet. That allowed crews to fix the road, at least temporarily. Now, the frustration for those who were stuck is that they know this will happen again if a more permanent fix is not found. County engineer Joey Nunley knows that folks are frustrated, but says that finding a solution will take time and commitment. It's got to be the commission making this a priority. Uh, uh, we'll probably have to move this road up out of the floodplain, which is not, ex no, it's not cheap. I mean, obviously all that takes money and we have to have willing landowners to, to work with us to do so. When the road collapsed, it also took down the water line. A crew from the water company was able, though, to lay the new lines. President Joe Biden will be in Louisiana tomorrow to survey storm damage and meet with local and state officials. President Biden has pledged his support for recovery efforts. The president said that more than 5,000 members of the National Guard have been activated to support the search, rescue and recovery efforts. Ida has been blamed for at least five deaths now, but officials fear that that number will go up in the coming days. I'm meteorologist Michael White with your Fox 10 storm tracker report. So far, things are really quiet regarding the Gulf Coast weather. We had showers and storms roll through last night, producing heavy rain and lightning. All of those have since left us. And as we pull back and show you the bigger picture, a lot more dry weather is engulfing not just the Gulf Coast, but also the southeast in general. Our humidity is going to start to get a little lower. Our mornings will start to be a few degrees cooler, but our afternoons will still be toasty. Temperatures are still expected to get into the lower 90s. 90s just like they did yesterday. So plan on hot afternoons, but fewer showers and storms will start making their presence felt in the coming days. But if you're concerned about the widespread rain that we saw roll through here last night, thankfully that is all long gone. Now, what about the tropical disturbance that we're watching down to our south in the Caribbean? As of now, the odds of it developing into a tropical depression or storm is at 30%. Most of the models have this thing going into Central America and then just dying off. But a couple want to bring this thing up into the southern Gulf of Mexico, which is the reason why we really have to keep watching it carefully. But the majority want to bring it in toward Honduras and Belize, and it dies off over land. So we'll just have to watch and wait and see what happens with this. Make sure you stay vigilant because September is the most active month of the hurricane season and we still have a ways to go before the season is over. As far as Larry, which is now a category one hurricane, it will become a major hurricane and even reach a category four by Labor Day Monday, but has a very good chance of lifting north and bypassing the U.S. mainland. That's not set in stone, but certainly something we'll be watching over the next several days. Weather headlines for your Thursday, a quiet start this morning, then this afternoon hot with scattered storms that can produce Produce heavy rain and lightning and then for Friday and Saturday our weather turns even drier. Let's go through the Fox 10 future cast where we'll deal with sun and clouds during the day. A little intermittent rain and storm activity will blossom up around school pickup time. And by the time you go to uh, pick the kids uh, or by the, by the time you leave work and then even into this evening, we will still have a few showers and storms around. So if you have nighttime plans, 
you might want to have the rain gear close by. Here's how the next seven days stack up. Highs will be in the 88 to 90 degree range the next several afternoons. We might actually get into the upper 60s starting tomorrow morning. 68 to 71 the morning temperature range. That's not terrible. A few scattered storms will come back for the Labor Day weekend, but not an overwhelming amount. So outdoor plans should still be a OK. We'll talk much more about your weather throughout the day right here on Fox 10 News Now.